welcome to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. I'm your host, Matt Halloran. Being your own loud is not new to marketing, but the mindset, strategies, and resources to help you get there are evolving faster than this industry is keeping up. It is time to find a new perspective on what works why and how to move your business forward. Listen as I interview guests to help you learn from them how to be your own loud. Let's get to the show. Hello and welcome to another Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Halloran. So our guest today, I have spent time at many conferences. She's a keynote speaker, an absolutely amazing human being, and she's on our podcast for two major reasons today. The first major reason is I want Sheena to talk about her brand, why she branded the company the way that she did, and more importantly, how she took negative uh, feedback, messages, comments, DMs, and turned that into a hugely recognized brand within financial services and truly leaned into who she is and really where she came from. And then the second thing is we're always trying to find ways to bring value to all of you so you can separate yourself from the advisor down the street. And one of the ways to do that is to provide meaningful investment, alternative investment opportunities, which is going to be the second half of the show. Shannon, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. I can't believe we haven't done this before. I, I, when we met before we were recording, doing our pre-record call, I was like, I've interviewed you before. And you're like, no, you have. I was like, how is that possible? Okay. So, so here's the question. Let's talk about the brand, right? So the, before we get into the hate, which is how you really blew the brand up, where did this idea come from? Why did you name the firm the way that you did? Give us the background on that. So I'll kind of start with what led me to launching the firm to begin with, and then we can get into how we branded it. But I launched the firm because over the last roughly you know eight to 10 years, I've been working with the advisor market, right? The wealth management space. And as sort of a, a portfolio manager, I've helped develop technology solutions when I was at Orion, I've managed portfolios, but my first love and passion is alternative investments. I was introduced to them in 2007, which you would think, you know, why in the world would you fall in love with hedge funds and private equity? And right before the financial crisis, like that doesn't sound like a normal person that makes you sound insane. But actually what it was during that process, I actually realized the value of many of alternative solutions and portfolio diversification and helping, you know, uh, limit downside. Um, yes, there were definitely stories of, that weren't great, but for the most part, alternatives did their job during that time. And I, I realized that this is game changing, but like nobody can access it, right? Because at the time, the average person could not access alternatives unless they were accredited investor or qualified purchaser. But there's been changes to the regulatory environment that have allowed for alternative types of products to be available and strategy wrappers like interval funds and ETFs and mutual funds that make these strategies a little more accessible to the average person. And so over the years, I've worked to help advisors build alt platforms, and I've evaluated a number of different solutions that say that they will help advisors, you know, access alternatives and build alt platforms and even interviewed to work for some of them. And I would give candid feedback and say, you know, there are a couple of things I think you need to consider if you want to support advisors correctly. You know, you got to think about the advisor business and you got to be advisor centered. And nobody wanted to hear that because there's a cost involved, right? And doing that is not an immediate revenue that comes from doing the things that I was suggesting. But I knew that if they did it, they would just dominate the market. And nobody wanted to take my advice. So I was like, screw it. I'll do it myself. Do it myself. Um, and so I <laughs> launched Bonrian with the intent of providing advisors the tools they needed to allocate to alternative investments at scales and be able to provide them a, a number of different resources to handle for any client. So everything from a liquid model marketplace to access platform to operational and compliance and legal workflows to education, business development, you know, we can go on and on and we'll get into that in the second half of the show. But yeah, second. so I had this great idea. I was like, this is going to, I'm going to disrupt the market. This is going to be game changing, but I got to come up with a name, right? So I thought, well, what do people know me for? What kind of weird things do they just automatically associate with me? And so one of those things is that I used to do pageants, right? I still am involved in the pageant world. It's 
once you're in it, you kind of can never get out of it. And a lot of my best friends come from that space. But so I thought, okay, well, I want to do something that kind of is a nod to that. So Queen Capital Management, Tierra Capital Management, Crown, all sound so lame, but also taken. Right? So sounds lame, but let's just see, is it even available? No, not at all. So all of those names are taken. There are firms that have those names that exist. So I took the word queen and I threw it in a translator and I had it spit out to me the word for queen in a hundred different languages. And then immediately honed in on the two languages that I have a personal connection to. And those are Gaelic, because my mom is from Ireland, and Polish, because my dad's parents are from Poland. And so the Polish word for queen was not going to work because Polish is not like English, not phonetic, yeah. uses like a weird hybrid of the traditional Latin alphabet and like Cyrillic. So, and nothing is pronounced the way it looks. So that was out of the question. But the Gaelic word for queen is Bonrian. And so it just made sense. And so we branded ourselves kind of with a nod to the Irish heritage and the queen part of me doing pageants. And then everything kind of snowballed from there. I told this story on a podcast for title and Cynthia Murphy said, well, that makes sense because you're the queen of alternatives. And then I was like, I'm trademarking that and I'm taking yeah. that and I'm going to leverage that because I didn't give myself that nickname. Somebody else gave it to me. I, I joke that Cynthia is my Paul, my shack to my Paul Pierce. Anybody who <laughs> follows sports knows that Paul yeah. Pierce's nickname is the truth. And the person who started calling him that was Shaq. So yeah, so she gave me that nickname and I have run with it and we branded it and it just all makes sense. We also happen so, to be female led and until two months ago, we were an all female team. So, okay. So Banrin was born queen now, and you are known and I want everybody to know this. So, so one, it's always good when somebody gives you the moniker. Mm -hmm. If you create the moniker yourself, it comes across as being a little bit self-centered. Yeah. So you were dubbed the Queen of Alts. And because of this, you have, I mean, you're on stages all over the place. Mm -hmm. You are a highly sought after keynote speaker because you've really leaned into that. But then there's another layer to this. So when we were hanging out at the Edge Conference and the little loungy thing with our friends at FICOM. You shared stuff with me I didn't know. And I'd like the audience to hear the backside of that because you could have cut, you, whoosh, I'm not doing this anymore because you got a little bit of a backlash. Would you mind sharing a little bit about that? Please? Sure. And, you know, it came up at Edge because I was attending Edge with uh, my chief of staff, Brittany Mason. And, uh, you know, part of uh, this story is affiliated with her as well and sort of how we became friends. But, you know, one of the things that I've found throughout my career is that women in this industry feel the need to kind of make themselves non-distracting. Is that the best way to explain it? When I first got into the industry, I was told, you know, don't be a distraction. So dress conservatively, don't wear a lot of makeup, low heels, no, don't call too much attention to yourself, right? Because you don't want to distract all the men in the room. And I kind of lived that and it wasn't authentic, right? Because I'm the former model and beauty queen who yeah. loves fashion and makeup. And like, that is not an authentic version of me. That's Shayna trying to, you know, hide herself and not be seen. And that's not who I am. That's not who I am at all. And so as I got, you know, more senior in my career, Rusty Vanneman over at Orion hired me to work there. And I started doing media at Orion. And he said to me, you really have a special brand and you should really lean into it and build that because I think it will suit you. And I really want to encourage you to think about that. So I thought to myself, well, that's good advice. And I found myself as I was being more authentically myself, getting messages from women and dads of daughters. I remember getting a, a DM on Twitter uh, or X or whatever it's called now from a dad saying that his daughter saw me on TV and said, daddy, it's a Disney princess because she thought I looked like a Disney princess. And I get messages from women saying, you know, it's nice to see someone that reflects like how I see myself. And I think that's really important in an industry where we struggle to have women in positions of authority. It, it, it's important for women to be able to 
you know, see themselves and someone like themselves in roles that they aspire to be in. For me, you know, I look at Sue Thompson and I think, can I be Sue Thompson when I grow up? Like she is unabashedly a fashionista. She's drop dead gorgeous. I can't believe she's a grandma. And, you know, I follow her Twitter. She's always doing fashion. She's always leans into it. She's also one of the 100 most powerful women in finance in the world, according to Barron's, and is constantly recognized for her influence in the industry. And she showed me that you could be that and succeed. Melody Hobson is another one. I worked for Melody. She's the same way. Melody is unabashedly Melody. She wears really fashionable clothing and she puts herself out there and really in a way that's a reflection of who she is authentically. And so I started doing that too. And, you know, the downside of that is in an industry that is dominated by men, men don't like it when women are, you know, empowered to be feminine, right? So they do try, especially with what they think are low hanging fruit. So like, they're not going to go after Melody or Sue Thompson because those are women who have major power, but they will look at the up and coming, the younger women, the women who are on that side and try to disrupt it. So I get a lot of hate, a lot of hate from men. And uh, I get a lot of your bimbo. I get comments about having, you know, lip fillers done, which is not true. You know, your face is frozen from Botox. You wear too much makeup. You know, what do you think? You're going to the club. You're bimbo. What's your OnlyFans? Like the amount of that kind of stuff that I get is overwhelming. And every time I get it, I'm like, I'm going to lean into it more. So Britt, my chief of staff, recently was told by somebody that she would never be successful in finance or business because she has bikini photos on Instagram. Now, if you don't know Britt, Britt used to be a supermodel. That was her job. She was a supermodel. She still walks runways for swim week and fashion week all over the world. And I don't in any way, shape or form attempt to stand in between that. That's who she is. That is authentically who Britt is. She's also incredibly brilliant well-connected and articulate and she's wonderful. And that's why she's on my team. But somebody told her recently that she would never be successful because she puts pictures of her in bikinis on the internet. And so I was, you know, I posted a picture of me in a bikini on the internet, not because I want male attention. That's not the point, but the men will say that's exactly what I'm doing. What they're missing is that it's not about that. It's about showing women that you don't have to cover up and hide who you are and worry about that. You being sexualized is not you, that's them. And that's their problem. And another example of that is, as you know, I've had some health issues over the last six months, eight months, Mm -hmm. some pretty serious ones. And I had to basically learn to walk again and rebuild my entire lower body. Like everything atrophied. I had no muscle left. I could barely stand without assistance. And I had to rebuild all that. So I spent a lot of hard work in the gym to rebuild my physique and my body. And I'm still a lot thinner than I was before. But I posted a picture kind of celebrating that I had, you know, achieved that after everything. And I got comments like, you know, you're embarrassing your son. Because apparently my wearing a swimsuit is offensive. But If I were to let that stop me from continuing to post those things, then that would send a signal that behavior is going to get the outcome that they want, right? Right. So when you go to my Instagram or you go to my X feed and you see me post fashion photos or me, Mm -hmm. I I had a photo shoot to celebrate, you know, healing from cancer and my, my recovery. And it was a fashion photo shoot and it's glamorous. And I posted those pictures because hell, after this year, I want to celebrate, you know, everything I've come through and how I came through it. That's not because I want men to send me DMs. No, that is about celebrating who I am authentically and encouraging other women to do the same. Well, when we were sitting there at the conference and Britt was there, you had both showed me messages that you had gotten from professional, you know, people in financial services that were, they're just abhorrent. And thank you for walking everybody through that. 
for a number of reasons. Number one, because, you know, as somebody who tries desperately to be an ally, I want more people to hear this. And I want more people to understand the onus on why you're doing it, because it is about the celebration of you. It's not for the attention of others. And I absolutely love that, too. I love the fact that you leaned into that. When I met Britt, I had met her before, and we're just, we're all talking, waxing philosophical and all of that stuff. And and then she said, well, you knew that I used to be a model, right? And I was like, it didn't even cross my mind, right? And then she's like, follow me on Instagram. And I was like, well, okay, so you're, you you both, you know, I was really quite surprised in such a good way that she leaned into that so comfortably because it really is who you are. And we talk about this, Shannon, all the time on this podcast. You have to rise above the noise and be your own loud. You are such an embodiment of that. And including leaning into it even more with being the queen of alts and just kind of basically giving everybody the finger. Now, well, and, and above and beyond that, this, I'm not the only one. I, I don't want to take total credit. There's women like Sue Thompson and Cameron Dawson mm-hmm. and Jacqueline Shattuck, and I could go on and on. Mm-hmm. There's Nancy Davis, where we all do that. We all lean in. If you look mm-hmm. at Cameron Dawson's Instagram, it's not drastically different from my own other than I'm a mom. So there's some photos of my son there. But you know, we do it because we want to show women and especially young girls, you know, they don't have to compromise who they are authentically to be in finance and be brilliant. Like Cameron Dawson's brilliant. brilliant. And, and the fact that she also happens to be dropped out gorgeous doesn't change that. It just means she has to work a little harder for people to take her seriously, which is really unfortunate. Yeah. But hopefully when people like her and me do this, the next generation won't have to. And I also think it's really important to show young women that you can be confident in yourself, right? And celebrate yourself. We spend so much time as a society, culturally, trying to make women feel bad about who they are and insecure about who they are, because then we can sell them makeup and Botox and all sorts of other stuff because we're taking advantage of women's personal insecurities. But when young women see women who are out there celebrating themselves, their initial reaction, and I ran into this recently, is to be like, oh my God, she's so full of herself right? Who does she think she is? Because inevitably what comes with that confidence comes male attention and, you know, opportunities. And there's this immediate reaction because we culturally kind of train girls to think that's not okay. And if you're doing that's icky, that's gross. Like you're taking advantage of what you look like and you're taking advantage of that. And I think that's totally the wrong way to look at it. We should have and help young girls feel confident in who they are and celebrate who they are. And again, hopefully change the norm so that the next generation's reaction to seeing women out there shining and celebrating themselves isn't, ew, she's so full of herself. Yeah. Now, our, our podcast listeners aren't going to be able to see your shirt, but can you share with what your shirt says? Because uh, it makes me really happy. <laughs> I, it says, underestimate me. That'll be fun. I think it's kind of appropriate right. for this conversation. I agree. I'm so happy you wore that. And so let's get into this, you know, underestimate me. You know, that'll be fun. So I, let's dive into the queen of vaults, right? So thank you for get, sharing your story. I'm so glad that you did that. I want everybody to hear that. Now rubber meets the road with... We have to be able to help financial services professionals Mm -hmm. offer things that are meaningful to their clients in a way that's easy for them to execute, communicate, and actually replicate, right? And and that's what you've built. So in the 10-ish minutes we have left, go. Okay. So I think what's really interesting to me, and I talk to investors, like venture capital investors all the time, and I'm always frustrated that they don't understand like the nuance of what we're trying to do. Like They just look at us as one of hundreds of thousands of alternative platforms that are out there. And I think you and I have spent a lot of time talking about it. Like We're nothing like all the other ones. Mm-hmm. And every time we sit down and talk to advisors, and I just got off the phone prior to coming on with you with a very large REA who said in the call, who are your competitors? Because I feel like you've mentioned ICAP and CASE a bunch of times, but I feel like you're nothing like them. I feel like you're a completely different animal. And my response to that is, well, like on paper, the people who are looking at us are people who are also looking at ICAP and CASE, but you're right. We are a completely different animal. So we focused on building Bonrian to be an advisor-centered model, right? So we wanted 
to look at it from the eyes of the advisor because that's what I used to be and that's what our team uh, and our partners over at Mammoth used to be. We're all former advisors. And, you know, alts are a way to stand out from the crowd, right? And to connect investments with personal passions and personal values. You can't really do that in the traditional space. Alts are really a way that you can actually use as a business development tool to stand out and also reach whatever your niche market is, right? So perfect example is I, I recently was interviewed with Sportico about sports rights, right? Sports rights mm. is incredibly compelling. And it's one of those things that you mention it to a client. And even if they've never done anything in the alt space before, they want to hear about it. If you are somebody who works with athletes and people in the sports industry, that's going to resonate for, with them. And that's something that they'll connect to. And that is a way to kind of earn that business. So we've really focused on providing advisors with a complete solution from beginning to end to help them use alts to bring in new business, improve relationships with existing clients and differentiate themselves from their peers. But also we understand that alts are complicated and operational compliance and legal. So we have this front end, I like to say, where we do the due diligence for you and we are completely transparent. You can see our DDQs and DDRs. You don't have to ask us for them. We um, provide you with all of the um, information you need uh, to use a proactive sales. We do webinars and educational content and we have research available to you and analytics so you can make those decisions. But then at the end of the day, if it's too complicated to invest in, you're still not going to invest. So we have partnered with Mammoth Technology to create a operational compliance workflow that integrates with all the different types of accounting software you use, reporting software you use. You know, there's a, a tool called Canoe that's often used by advisors to scrape data so that you can reconcile data. It's complicated and but we streamline all of that and then we integrate with Orion, Black Diamond, Adapar, and Tamarack so that everything is in this real nice, easy ecosystem that you never have to leave from the beginning to the end of the transaction. And you can continue to maintain oversight so that you can justify billing on these assets too, because you're still managing them. You're still getting the cap calls and raising the cash and you don't have to wait for the client. You're still reporting on everything and you can you know, make decisions on these things, which is something that just hasn't been available before. And while there's a lot of people that do little parts of what we do, there's not anyone who does it from beginning to end seamlessly where you never have to leave the ecosystem. Oh, and yeah, you don't even have to leave your back office accounting software. It's all there. It all integrates. It's all seamlessly pushing into those places so that it's, you know, much smoother experience for everybody involved. So that's really what so, we do. And so we like to work with advisors to help them sort of differentiate themselves using alternatives. So, so when we were, when you, I, people might be surprised at this just because I'm not an advisor, but you walked me through a demo. Like when we were you're like, Hey, let me just show you this. And you had it up on your screen and, and, one of the neat things that I really liked in, in going back to the, so, so the athlete component, right. Mm -hmm. And being able to, but you have systems for almost every niche and a way that you can position, whether they have a conversation with you or your team so that an advisor can actually sit down and say, okay, well, you know, Shana, I really want to focus on working with female obstetricians, mm -hmm. right. And because of your background as being an advisor and you know these products and services so well, that's when you and your team can sit down and say, well, you know, hey, here's something that we think they would be very attracted to. Could you talk just a little bit about that real quick? Yeah. So while we were at Edge, I met with an advisor who likes to work with entrepreneurs, right? So mm -hmm. we have a firm on our platform called Merriweather Group Capital. They do middle market direct lending to small businesses. And their fund is called the Hero Fund. And the tagline mm -hmm. is supporting America's heroes. Mm -hmm. And by that, they mean America's small businesses. So the idea of that and the way of positioning it and the whole way that like they resonate and they market themselves really is something that other entrepreneurs would resonate with, right? I, I, another example is like a wine fund. If you have a client that loves wine, then a wine fund is really going to appeal to them, especially if like once a year they get a case 
of the latest mintage that they can open up during the holidays and say, this came from my vineyard. They're not lying. It did. And there's something to be said about being able to target that. And what makes us really different is we're not trying to have the biggest managers in the world on there. We're looking for managers that can give you some sense of exclusivity, which also means we got to have a lot of managers, right? Because some of these managers don't have a lot of capacity, but we want to be able to have these opportunities, these niche opportunities to connect with what your target market is as an advisor, you know, gain the business, earn the business and deepen those relationships, get more assets from existing clients by really bringing them things that's going to resonate with them. Because let's be honest, like you bring me the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, like fine, you can put it in my portfolio, but I don't care. Right. Do I care that it's Vanguard or Fidelity or Spider? No, like whatever, just whatever's cheapest. You know, but so does every other advisor. Like, I'm not going to differentiate myself because I use Vanguard and that guy uses Spider. It's the same thing, man. You're not doing anything special and I'm not getting, I can do that myself. I can open a Fidelity account and buy it myself. Why am I paying you? Right. And we can argue that there is, you know, other things things that go into it. But at the end of the day, don't you want to offer something differentiated? And I think we talked about this. I am in no way, shape or form suggesting to invest in stuff that's not a good investment. Right. But I am saying that the world is very broad and there are lots of good investments in a lot of different spaces that will meet a lot of different people's needs and that will resonate with them. And so why not help people invest in ways that align with their interests and their passions. And then they get excited about investing and then they're more educated and then they're paying attention and then the conversations are happier and they're less likely to panic sell because they care and they're attached to it. All of these things have a psychological component too, but I really think that advisors need to start to think about that in a world where there's fee compression and everybody and anybody can access the same stuff. Like where do you stand out and how do you do that? And we're really looking to build something to help advisors do just that. All right. If somebody wants to reach out to you, one, who should, and number two, where should they go? Well, we primarily service two markets, financial advisors and asset managers in the alternative space. So if you are an alternative investment asset manager, whether it be private or public, who is struggling with your distribution strategy to the advisor market, give us a call. We do coaching and support you to be more successful in that. We are not a third-party marketer. We are not there to raise assets for you. We're simply there to put you in a position to have better chance of success and to pair you with advisors that are looking for folks just like you. And on the advisor side, same thing. We're here to help you use alternatives to improve and grow your business grow your client relationships, succeed to get the types of clients you want and and do that in a way that's differentiated from everyone else. So if that's you, then give us a call and we work with you, Matt. Um, I say this all the time. We really feel it's important to give advisors all the support and tools that they need to be able to do that. And if you're an advisor who isn't really sure what that niche is, You know, we work with Matt and Proudmouth to help provide you with coaching and opportunities so that you can kind of figure that out and lean into it and help you succeed in doing just that. So we have partners that help with marketing, help with branding, and we continue to grow that because we think that advisors want that. They don't just want a place to go find a private equity fund. Nope. Well, first off, thank you for sharing your story. I want everybody to know the main point of the first half of the show was you have to lean into it, be your own loud, support yourself, be confident in who you are, and please make sure that even with a little bit of love or a little bit of hate, that you're going to be able to be who you want to be because that's really, then you have no competition. So that's number one. Number two. We talk a lot on this show about trying to get greater share of wallet from your existing clients, being able to have passion type investments that you can have exactly what Shana was just saying, where they sink their teeth into it. They're not going to be looking at getting in and out of it because it's something that is, and I'm pointing at my heart instead of my head, right? Just make sure that you realize the power of that. And thirdly, 
I, I thank, thank you for saying we do. I love working with you. Any of your advisors that we can help. And I hope that a lot of our advisors that listen to the show will, will engage you specifically. They can find you on LinkedIn and Twitter. Where else should they go? Uh, you can find me on Instagram. And of course, you can go to our website, bonriancapital.com. And you can always email me, Shana at bonriancapital.com. And we'll make sure that we have all of those links. So Shana, lastly, listen, if you are struggling with your niche, your brand, your ability to really separate yourself from the advisor down the street and stop being the best kept secret, please go to the Pod Rocket Academy. Uh, we have lots of wonderful courses and the coaching that Shana was just talking about to help you figure this stuff out for yourself. So for Shana and all of us here at Proudmouth, this is Matt Hallern, and we'll see you on the other side of the mic. Thanks for listening to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. If you want to know more about how you can be your own loud, visit us at proudmouth.com and sign up for the Pod Rocket Academy. Through courses and office hours led by professional podcast producers and digital marketers, you will learn everything you need to know to become the trusted subject matter expert you were meant to be.